Good morning, everybody. I like your background, Miss Lazat. It takes time to figure it out, so I'm a little excited about it myself. <laughs> I'm very impressed. All right, so we have 20 participants in the room, and I know we have some teachers joining in as well. Um, today is Capstone focused on mental health awareness. So we're really happy to have some presenters who are gonna share with us their own personal findings on ways to improve mental health and become a little bit more aware of, of ourselves and our surroundings and ways that we can help each other. Our first presenter is Ella Copeland and she's gonna be presenting on the physiology of stress and how to manage it. So I'm going to turn it over to her. I have enabled the sharing settings, Ella. So you should be all set to share your screen and get started whenever you're ready. Okay, can everyone see my screen? We can see your screen, but I think the video um, on you turned off. So you just might wanna, so we could okay. see, um, put your video back on. Okay, are we all set now? Yes. Awesome. Okay, thank you all for joining me. Today I'm going to be giving my capstone presentation about the physiology of stress and how to manage it. So stress, why did I choose stress? I chose to explore this topic because it is significant to each and every person. If I had everyone in this room right now who has been stressed before raise their hands, we would all see how widespread the feeling of stress is. We've all experienced it to varying degrees, so this information is applicable to all of our lives. Learning about why the body reacts to stress and how to manage it will impact daily life, well-being, and even lifespan. So within the broad term of stress, there are two main types, each impacting the body in different ways. There's acute stress, which are events of stress lasting for a short period of time, such as a traffic jam or an argument, and then there's chronic stress, which is constant and prolonged feelings of worry across larger periods of time. It seems logical that chronic stress can impact the body as it persists for more time, but acute stress can have just as much impact. We are built to handle small doses of stress, and while some acute stress may be minor or brief, it can add up to be hundreds of occurrences per day. The first step in recognizing stress is acknowledging the stressors or triggers that activate the stress response. This can include people, situations, events, or feelings. I'd like to make the distinction here between stress and anxiety disorders. This following information is about stress, not mental illnesses. And while this information is still helpful and absolutely relevant, those should be handled differently with the integration of professional help. So everyone has different types of stressors. What may cause me feelings of worry and overwhelm may be no problem for the next person. There are many different types of stressors. There are emotions such as fears, social situations such as interactions with others, change, decision-making, work and jobs such as long hours, conflict and deadlines, and the media such as the news, social media, and content from the internet. Within regular life, we are subconsciously or consciously absorbing and enduring countless stressors every single day. This can cause many major issues. Oftentimes, the physiological response of the body is diminished, diminished sorry, as just stress, but this is valid. It is stress and symptoms shouldn't be disregarded. 75% of all medical complaints are stress related. This previews how powerful the stress response is on health. But how does this specifically affect the body? Over years and years, it has been discovered that stress impacts each and every system within the body. We have been designed to react to some external and internal stress. So while the impacts of stress individually may be small, when added up, they're quite large. To put this into more casual terms, we have all felt the effects of stress at some point in our lives. These are feelings of nausea, butterflies in the stomach, the heart pounding or racing, feeling tense or tight, having a headache, 
or being out of breath. These are all widely known and accepted reactions to stressful situations, but I wanted to know why, and what I found was astonishing. Starting with the muscular system, it produces noticeable and tangible effects. Upon the stressful situation, muscles will tense to protect against any injuries. They're preparing for any rapid movements required in the fight or flight response and are also creating an armor against potential threats. Long periods of these muscles being tense though can produce even more noticeable effects. For instance, prolonged tension in the neck and shoulder can cause headaches or migraines. Moving on to the respiratory system, its purpose is to supply oxygen to the red blood cells and remove carbon dioxide from the body. However, these functions can be inhibited or altered during stress. There are two main symptoms in respiratory stress. The first is shortness of breath. It increases muscle tone and will decrease blood supply. There's also rapid breathing, which is an increased supply of oxygen to the muscles. Muscle pain can also be a respiratory symptom as it is a decrease in pain threshold from a lack of oxygen in the mus muscles. Going on to the cardiovascular system, which is comprised of the heart and blood vessels pumping blood to the organs, it can have short-term and long-term effects. The stress response can short-term increase heart rate, produce stronger heart contractions, and release stress hormones such as adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisols. The blood pressure will also rise as the vessels constrict to increase the amount of blood going to the muscles. In the first heart rate, this shows a relaxed normal heart rate, but the heart rate on the second line below it shows the elevated heart rate as a result of a stressful situation. On a more chronic scale, the stress response can produce chronic issues with the heart and blood vessels. For instance, this can translate to a constantly higher heart rate, blood pressure, and stress hormone levels. This can also increase the risk of stroke heart attack, and hypertension. Both short-term and long-term, stress can cause inflammation in the circulatory system and the coronary arteries. In a study done in 2004, approximately 25,000 participants from over 52 countries were used to investigate the links between the psychological factors and the heart. It was found that people who reported higher levels of stress in at least one of these categories on the left had a higher risk of heart attack. This shows how powerful stress is on the health of the heart. As forementioned, stress hormones are released during the stress response. The HPA axis in the brain will increase their production. Cortisol, which is one of these stress hormones, then increases energy fuel for any reactions. This can be beneficial as cortisol is naturally produced throughout the day. You can see it on the graph that in each of the categories, cortisol is naturally increased in the morning and then decreases at night. Cortisol is also important for immune system regulation and inflammation control. However, chronic release of cortisol and other stress hormones can impair the communication between the immune system and the HPA axis in the brain at the cellular functioning level. This could block the removal of some acids in the bloodstream. Cortisol can also break down lean tissue for conversion, oh, sorry, for sugar conversion to energy and chronic cortisol release can release stored sugars for quick energy, therefore depleting the body in the long run. Moving on to the GI system, the gut, which is comprised of millions of neurons and the brain are in constant communication. Stress can enhance this communication, triggering pain, nausea, or bloating. This can also change gut bacteria, influence mood, and increase the risk of gut disease. Digestion will be slowed down as blood is redirected to the muscles and brain. The body will prioritize alertness over digestion. However, this can affect the nutrients absorbed by the intestines. This can also affect the speed at which food moves throughout the body, causing diarrhea or constipation. This also will allow more gut bacteria to enter the body as the intestinal barrier weakens. Finally, with the nervous system, in stress, 
the sympathetic nervous system, which is a subdivision of the autonomic nervous system, shifts its energy resources to fight or flight mode. The sympathetic nervous system will signal the adrenal glands to produce hormones. This can cause changes in the heart rate, respiration rate, and blood pressure. The sympathetic nervous system activation is temporary and will go away with the stressor through the parasympathetic nervous system. But overactivation of the nervous systems will drain the body and will affect other body systems as well. So that medical and physiological look at stress responses effects on the body can be scary, overwhelming, and even daunting. However, this information can serve as useful instead. By understanding how and why the body reacts to certain stressors, we can better manage stress. So stress management will mean different things to everyone. We all have things that we normally do to calm us down, but hopefully these strategies can help even more. The following strategies are scientifically proven and effective ways to manage stress. Starting with the most popular and most widely known, physical activity. Exercise is known for helping many issues, stress being one of them. Fitness helps the body endure stress's effects. It will also produce healthier muscles, bones, joints, and increase endurance, muscular strength, and stamina. A better blood pressure, heart and lung efficiency, energy, sleep, and concentration will also come out of it. As seen on the graph, physically active people who were doing at least three hours of physical activity per week had a better stress balance than their physically inactive counterparts. Similarly, in a study, 3,400 people, sorry, 3,400 people in cardiovascular risk categories from ages 25 to 64 completed questionnaires about exercise, health, depression, anger, distrust, and social integration. The results showed that at least two to three times a week of physical activity helped them feel less depressed, less angry, more trusting, and less stressed. But by only doing one to two days of physical activity per week, they were already feeling more socially integrated. This shows that physical activity will increase psychological well-being. On a similar note, nutrition is very important. In this context, nutrition will be referred to as the fuel that your body needs. Stress will create a larger nutritional demand on the body as the body uses up protein, vitamins A, B, and C reserves in stress. So refueling the body properly is key. The correct foods can help the immune system, prevent disease, and increase energy. Some may go to stress eating. This is caused by chemicals released in the stress response. Comfort foods that are high in fat or sugar content will reduce these chemicals, but this is not a long-term solution for stress management. Rather, we can reduce these chemicals in a more healthy way with a balanced diet. By eating complex carbohydrates, with, which help with serotonin, fiber, and fruits and vegetables, these can all help the body long-term recover from stress. There are also several relaxation techniques that can be effective. For instance, progressive muscle relaxation can improve mood and daily function. It is a scientific and systematic way to release residual tension. This is done by tensing and releasing the major muscle groups to reduce electroactivity in the muscle fibers. Imagery relaxation can also be used to defer any negative thoughts and reduce mental anxiety. This uses all senses for visualization. Mind-body relaxation can also be helpful. It is physical conditioning plus mental relaxation, such as yoga or tai chi. Mindfulness and meditation can also be very effective. It is a continuum as seen in the diagram above. It starts by paying attention to the environment around you and how you feel. It is awareness without judgment. This will decrease cortisol levels and practice self-regulation to focus and calm. It will also diminish the sympathetic nervous system response and can cause changes in biology for the positive. It can produce helpful changes in the autonomic nervous system, neuroendocrine functions, and the immune system, 
all from practicing mindfulness or meditation. Breathing is also a stress management strategy that we have all heard, but how does it actually work? In 24 hours, we take approximately 17,000 breaths on average. That turns out to be 12 to 24 breaths per minute. Breathing is one of the most effective ways to connect with the autonomic nervous system and the vagus nerve, which is the emotional regulator of the body. Effective breathing can reduce strain on the heart, organs, and the body. An example of this effective breathing is diaphragmatic breathing. Diaphragmatic breathing facilitates the stretch reflex and sends messages to the brain through the vagal nerve or the emotional regulator. It will decrease sympathetic nervous system output and will occur at four to six breaths per minute. Less frequent breaths means more oxygen to be absorbed. To practice this, also called belly breathing, you would place one hand on the chest and one hand on the abdomen. Both hands should rise, but the hand on the abdomen should rise more. It can also be done in combination with a box breath or a three to four part breath. This would mean that you would inhale for three, hold for three, exhale for three, and hold for three. Again, trying to breathe through your belly rather than just your chest. Diaphragmatic breathing can have many positive benefits. It can increase mood, decrease pain and inflammation, help the immune system, release tension, aid the GI system, and increase cognition. Mindset can also be very effective in stress reduction. Stress can be seen as an asset. Stress isn't all bad. The stress response can be a source of energy, creativity, and motivation. So by reframing our thoughts, we can reframe how we react to stress. For instance, I can say, my heart is pounding to provide me energy and strength. In the words of Andrea Basil, a licensed social worker at Guilford Youth and Family Services, there's a certain level of stress that clicks in your motivation and your ability to push yourself a bit farther than you would have. Stress can also make you social. The stress response will release oxytocin, which is a neurohormone that fine tunes your social instinct and makes you crave physical contact, therefore enhancing empathy. Oxytocin will also motivate you to seek support, which makes us more inclined to support others in turn. Oxytocin is released as much as adrenaline in the stress response. So we can take the step to recognize that stress isn't all bad. To prove this theory about mind over matter, the Journal of Experimental Psychology conducted a study. In round one, participants were put into stressful situations and their stress response was recorded. They viewed stress as bad for their health. In round two though, participants were taught to have a different mindset. They were taught to not view stress as bad, but as their stress response as helpful and their body trying to help them. The results were amazing. The participants in round two were less stressed, they were more confident, and their stress response actually changed. Their blood vessels were more relaxed and their heart rate still did increase, but their cardiac profile was overall much healthier. This shows that how we view stress matters and can produce biological changes for the better. To wrap this up, the stress response clearly has numerous large effects on each of the body systems. With this knowledge, we can properly integrate effective stress management techniques to help reduce the impact on our body. Becoming stress resistant is not an easy task, but a worthwhile one. So thank you all for joining me. Is there any questions that I can answer? Thank you, Ella, excellent job. So we'll open it up to, um, to questions from the audience. Um, you can raise your hand using the raise hand function in the Zoom room, um, and we could call on you to answer questions, to ask questions, or you could ask questions in the chat and we could read those aloud. And for the teachers that have students Zooming in, um, the teachers can ask the questions for the students.
We have a few comments um, in the chat. Mrs. Hall, great presentation, very well done. Mrs. Abagnero, no questions, but great job with the thumbs up. <laughs> Love what I learned. Yay, Ella. Uh, Miss Anastasio, excellent job. Miss Hudson, congratulations, Ella. That was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Buno, excellent. Ella, thank you for this important information. Um, Latha Majid, I'm probably saying it wrong. I'm sorry. Great job with a thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you touched on a lot of things that many of us don't really take the time to think about. And, you know, we focus so much on the after effect of stress and sometimes lose sight of what's actually happening in our body as to what's causing it. Um, mm -hmm. And I wrote down a note about the 75% of medical issues come from stress. And I was actually talking to a friend of mine that studies holistic medicine. And she said that to me last night that, you know, 80% or more of our stress really comes from you know, what's of our medical issues could be from what's happening in our body. Obviously there's, sometimes that may not be the case, but it is really interesting to see what your body can do in terms of stress. Absolutely. We have a question here from Parker Hughes. Why did you okay. choose this topic in specific? Oh, that's a good question. I think I chose this topic because like I said before, it is really relevant to everyone, um, no matter your background or what you do. Um, everyone will experience stress at some point. So I thought it was really interesting to be able to learn about and share about a topic that is relevant to every person. Um, also within my own life, I know that I have felt stress before as we all have um, and felt the effects of stress on my body. So I think it was interesting to figure out why I was feeling these effects of stress um, and learn the science and the why behind it. Um, Ms. Abagnero said, didn't realize how stress makes us more social. Totally makes sense why I'm stressed and procrastinating that I seek out colleagues and friends. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Miss um, Hudson, Ella, I'm curious if your stress management strategies changed after you did all of this research. Did you gain new strategies that have helped you? Oh, that's also a good question. Um, I think yes, after learning about all of these different techniques and also why they work, I've tried to integrate them into my own life. Um, I know for me, I've always heard that, you know, taking a deep breath can help you calm down or going for a walk or talking to a friend. These are all good ways to manage stress. Um, but I never really knew why they worked. So I think learning the information behind it about um, why breathing is effective or why seeking out help can help um, you feel better has encouraged me to practice these techniques and has made a big difference. I know breathing has been really helpful for me. Um, I've tried that out and doing some of these relaxation techniques, especially before bed, those are things that I've tried already and have really worked. Yeah, absolutely. And I noted something in your presentation, you were mentioning the breathing through the stomach or the belly as opposed to yeah. the chest. And it makes a lot of sense because I think when we, when we're breathing heavy and stress, we kind of feel our heart racing, but when you breathe in through your stomach, it's a, it's a different feeling. I've never tried it until now. So thank you. <laughs> um, Miss Anastasia, what was your favorite part of doing the research or what did you learn the most? Um, I think it was really fun to try to gain information from a bunch of a variety of sources. So in my research, I read a few books, I looked at articles, watched some videos, um, I was able to conduct an interview. So I think it was really cool to be able to gather information from a wide variety of sources rather than just reading a textbook or looking through an article. Um, I also really liked watching my project kind of change as it went on. Um, because in the beginning, I was just going to do a project about the physiological responses of stress on the body. But as I went along, I was noticing that there's so many effective and positive ways to manage stress. So I think that was also cool to be able to watch my project evolve as I was working on it. The answer. 
So tell us what's next for you, Ella. Do you plan to keep learning about this? Do you do you plan to do anything over the summer related to this and your own personal studies? Well, I think the beauty of the topic of my project is that it will always be relevant to me because no matter where I go or what I do, I will encounter some stressful situations. Um, so I think this information can be really helpful to take with me throughout my daily life. Um, just because anytime I am affected by stress in the future, I will have this knowledge and these stress management techniques that are at the ready for me. Awesome. Then we have one last comment question here from Ms. Kellogg. Great presentation, Ella. How do you, do you have any suggestions about how to shift one's perspective on stress from being a negative influence to that more positive perspective? that it can help us in the moment when we are stressed out? That's an awesome question. Um, I know I've already tried practicing doing this. And I think for me, um, the first step was just recognizing what I was feeling. So for example, let's say that um, maybe you have the butterfly feeling in your stomach because you're nervous for a project or for talking to someone or whatever it will be. Um, I think the first step is recognizing the physical effects of stress that you're feeling um, and then trying to flip it around. So if you're thinking that, oh my gosh, my stomach doesn't feel good. I have butterflies in my stomach. I wish this would go away. Rather flip that and recognize, okay, I do have the butterfly feeling in my stomach. My stomach doesn't feel great, but why? This is my body trying to get me ready for this situation. So my body really is just trying to prepare me and get me ready. Um, and just acknowledging why your body's producing these effects, I think can be really powerful because then it takes away the fear. So it's not, oh my gosh, I hate when my stomach gets this way. It's, oh, okay, I know why my body's doing this. So it's okay. Awesome, nice answer. Other questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent job, Ella. Really, really impressive. And um, I know it takes a lot of courage to share about this kind of stuff. So we're all very, very impressed. And I think we'll take this with us through the rest of the day and hopefully for the next few months or years. And I'm really happy that you were able to find some great resources for yourself. And especially at such a young age, some of us can't figure this stuff out until our 30s or 40s. So um, really impressive. And, and I think we all learned a lot here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So keep up the good work. Keep doing it because you, you have a knack. You absolutely do. <laughs> Thank you. For everyone else on the call, our next presentation is at 12 o'clock. So you feel free to come right back on the same Zoom link. This presentation, um, we have a little adjustment in the schedule. It's going to be hosted by the Mental Health Alliance um, in collaboration with Ms. Duggan and Ms. Dameron. And then we will have Shana Grabowski presenting on social media's impact um, on mental health. So um, that will take place from about 12 to one. So feel free to come back on around 12. Thanks everybody.